Let's talk about the rules of continuous integration that you simply cannot afford to ignore. Why? Because continuous integration is the first stage of modern deployment pipeline, and so central to the practice of continuous delivery. If you get this wrong, everything downstream all the way to successful production releases is at risk. Hi, I'm Dave Farley, and welcome to the new Modern Software Engineering channel. If you came here expecting continuous delivery, don't worry, you're in the right place. We've changed the name and hopefully you're going to have a lot of fun here. So what is continuous integration? Before we jump into the rules, let's quickly clarify what continuous integration actually means. It's not just a description of some tools like Jenkins, Semaphore, Harness or Team City. Continuous integration is largely a discipline. It's about making change visible and integrating frequently, continuously, to avoid integration hell. The foundational idea of continuous integration is rather simple. There's only one interesting version of your software, only one version of the truth, and that's the current version. So the job of continuous integration is to concretely establish that truth, that current version, as close to continuously as we can sensibly achieve. Team members share their changes with each other frequently to ensure that the versions stay stable and works for everyone. Done right, continuous integration makes software development faster, safer and more collaborative and ultimately easier. But there's a catch. To reap these benefits, you need to follow some non-negotiable rules. Before we explore these rules, let me pause and say thank you to our sponsors. We're extremely fortunate to be sponsored by Equal Experts, Transfic, Tuple, and Honeycomb. Transfic is a financial technology company applying advanced continuous delivery techniques to deliver low latency trade routing services to some of the biggest financial institutions in the world. All of these companies offer products and services that are well aligned with the topics that we discuss here on the Modern Software Engineering channel every week. So if you're looking for excellence in continuous delivery and software engineering, do click on the links in the description below and check them out. I'd also like to add my thanks to our sponsors for continuing to support us through this new change to our channel. Rule number one, always run commit tests locally before committing. Continuous integration starts even before you commit your code. Write your test and run them locally first. This aligns perfectly and closely with test-driven development. Use the red-green refactor cycle and add commit onto the end to trigger continuous integration. Write a failing test, red, make it pass, green, refactor for clarity and readability. And only when your tests pass should you commit your code. By doing this, you're ensuring that your changes don't unnecessarily disrupt the team. Rule two, wait for the results of the commit build. Once you've pushed your code, your job is over. You wait for the build results. Don't wander off to a meeting, lunch or the restroom. If something breaks, you must be the first person to know about it and fix it. That's why I recommend in keeping continuous integration build times to under five minutes. Rule three. Fix or revert failures within 10 minutes. Failures happen, and when they do, act immediately. You should be the first person to see a failure that you introduced, and you should then fix it immediately. I recommend that you start a clock as soon as you see the failure, and allow yourself 10 minutes to either fix the problem or revert the change. Don't block the pipeline for hours or leave others stuck waiting. Small, frequent commits make all of this much easier to understand the cause of the problem, and so most of the time you can fix it within that 10-minute window. But if you can't fix it within the window, revert the change and look into it in slower time without being in anybody else's way. Rule 4. Revert changes when necessary. If your teammate breaks any of these rules so far and leaves the build broken and goes away from the keyboard, revert their change for them. The deployment pipeline is a shared resource and it's important, it's our route to production. So you, we must keep it flowing. Be polite, but firm. 
let your teammate know that their code broke the build and encourage them to be better disciplined next time. Rule five, monitor your changes through the pipeline. Even after the commit stage passes, your job isn't done. Keep an eye on your release candidate as it transits the pipeline. Is it passing acceptance tests, performance tests, and security checks? Your changes don't just need to compile, they need to be production ready. That's what the deployment pipeline is looking to establish. So if your commit breaks any of these tests anywhere in the pipeline, it's still your problem, and it's still your responsibility to keep the pipeline flowing. So once again, start a clock and give yourself 10 minutes to commit a fix or revert the change. Rule six, treat a broken build as a build seam. If someone else notices that your change broke the build before you do, then you've committed a build seam and it's now on you to redress the problem. In some of the teams where I've worked, we had fun gamifying this. On some teams, we would wear silly hats until the next build sin was committed and in others we'd pay a fine to contribute towards the beer fund or something for the team. Rule seven, commit small, commit often. Commit at least once per day but ideally a lot more often than that. Small incremental changes are easier to test, easier to debug and easier to integrate and they make it easier to spot and understand your mistakes too. Waiting too long to commit creates larger, riskier changes and increases the chances of a conflict with other people's code. Rule eight, maintain a fast commit feedback loop. Aim for feedback on commits within five minutes and the entire transit through the deployment pipeline within an hour. This speed allows you to catch problems early, reducing the costs and complexity of fixing them. Rule nine, Automate everything. From running tests to deploying changes, automation is your best friend. Continuous integration relies on fast, reliable, repeatable processes. Automate testing, configuration management, deployment and build creation to remove manual errors and keep things consistent and repeatable. Rule 10, take ownership of failures. If your commit causes failure anywhere, it's your responsibility, and so your job to fix the problem. Even if it breaks something unexpected, if my code breaks your code, that's my problem. If I cause a failure, I fix it. This is the only scalable response, and since I introduced the mistake, I am the person that's best placed to fix it, because it was my mistake. Always organise your work this way. Work to avoid imposing extra unplanned work on other people, particularly as a result of any failure that you may introduce. Continuous integration requires discipline and accountability. There are no excuses. Continuous integration is a cornerstone of modern software development. But to make it work, you must follow these rules, otherwise it's not really continuous integration. They're not just best practices, they're essential to ensuring your team's success. If you'd like to explore these principles in more detail, do check out the links below that describe some of my training materials, including some free training courses that you can learn from. And don't forget to subscribe for more insights into continuous delivery and modern software engineering from the channel. Thank you for watching. Thanks too to our Patreons. Your support is helping us to expand our channel here. Uh, thank you very much indeed for your support. And if you'd like to join our Patreon community, then please do check the links in the description below too. You can sign up from there. Thank you and bye-bye.